Hey everyone, welcome to Church on Mother's Day. Now I wanna get this right off the bat, okay? If you're with your mom right now, I want you to give her a hug, get her a coffee or make her an omelet. You know, if you're not with her, you can press pause on the live stream and text her or better yet, maybe call her and tell her how much she means to you. Now I uh, encourage you to stick around for the rest of the service because we're gonna have a special Mom's Day moment that I hate for you to miss. Well, my name's Ken, I'm one of the pastors here at Hope City, and I wanna take a moment and just speak really quickly to the parents with young children. We know that engaging with church online and focusing on what's happening can be a little bit difficult for some families because, you know, kids running around. Man, God bless children, but they are noise machines. Uh, our kids team uh, puts together some really great content every week that's fun for kids to engage with and helps them learn about God. You can head to hopecity.ca forward slash kids and get them set up right now, uh, but it is on demand. And so if you can't get to it today, you can do that throughout the week. Now our worship team is gonna come right away and lead us in some songs today. But before they do, I just wanna gather our church and kind of prepare our hearts. Um, in worship, God can speak to us, but we have to be listening. Uh, God can refresh our souls, but we have to be present. And so let's just take a quick moment, uh, pray and prepare our hearts. God, we thank you that um, although we can't be together uh, physically, that we can still be together. And God, as a church right now, we lift our hearts to you. We lift our voices to you. We trust you in all things. We give you our worries. We give you our fears. We give you our anxieties, Lord. And we ask for your peace. As we worship you, would you be honored today? We love you, Jesus. Amen. Awaken the light, 
conquered the grave You free every captive and break every chain Oh God, you have done great things We dance in your freedom, awaken the light Oh Jesus, I say your name
light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. When I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop Moms really are the best, and so to all the moms out there, thank you. Now we realize that Mother's Day can be an emotionally complex day for a lot of people, and so for all of the invisible moms out there who have suffered a loss during pregnancy, to all of the hopeful moms who are longing for their own child one day, to all the dear moms who have outlived one of their own kids, to all the moms to many who have never had a child of their own, 
but have mothered so many. To all the stepmoms, the foster moms, and the single moms who every day bravely love and protect and give to their kids, from Hope City to you, Happy Mother's Day. Now, Pastor Phil, our lead pastor, is going to come and share our very last message in this Promise Keeper series, which is sad because it's been such a great series. Uh, but before he does, I wanted to thank you, church, for sacrificially giving during the season of COVID. We know that the temptation is real to stop giving altogether when we're scared, when we're uncertain about our future, or when our financial picture doesn't look the way that we thought it would. Uh, but we know that our trust is not in our circumstances, our trust is not in our bank account, our trust is not in the security that we can provide for ourselves. Our trust is in Jesus. And we know that He can take what we have and do so much more with it than we ever could. So if you'd like to continue giving, or maybe restart giving, or maybe give your very first gift, you can head to hopecity.ca forward slash give to learn how to do that. Again, happy Mother's Day. And as Pastor Phil comes to share the last installment of Promise Keepers, I pray that it would bring you encouragement, that it would renew your hope as we look at another one of God's promises for us. I want to personally say a happy Mother's Day to every mom watching out there. Know this, I honor, I value, and I bless you. Um, I want to say happy Mother's Day specifically to my 81-year-old mom who is watching as well. Moms, thank you for all you do. And I honestly, I love that moment we had here earlier. It just brought a smile to my face. It actually brought a little bit of a tear to my eye. You know what I've come to realize during this season of COVID? Maybe you're a little bit like me. I'm living with the tension of technology. Anyone else with me on this? Like, you love the fact that we have the things that we have. I mean, I love that you invite us into your home every single week. I love that we have the capability to still do church. But if I'm honest, there are times when, can I say this? I hate technology because of what it does to me. It's the feeling of this constant need to check my phone. Sometimes even before going to bed, I'll, I'll read a message and it just hijacks my mind and it doesn't allow me to sleep that well. And then you throw in social media and I see what great lives other people are living in COVID and I'm not. Well, well you get the picture, right? I just find it really difficult to turn off. Anyone relate? If so, why don't you just give me a thumbs up in the chat here? Check this out, 58% of people don't go one waking hour without checking their phone. 59% of people check email as it comes in and 89% check it daily on vacation. 80% of teenagers actually sleep with their phone and 84% of people believe they couldn't go one day without their phones. And that was pre-COVID stats there, man. Don't you just wish that sometimes you could be free of the tension? Don't you just wish that sometimes you could just have this out? I mean, all this technology, it makes you feel spent and tired. And I've heard the phrase lately, uh, Zoom fatigue. We're just done looking at our screens. We're weary. Now, I'm finishing off our series entitled Promise Keeper, and we've been looking at the promises of God in our lives. Promises that we can fully depend upon. And the promise I want to conclude with today is simply this. You are always given an out. You are always given an out. We all experience deep soul weariness at different times. And sometimes I think we can point to the sign or the factor, like right now, universally, it's COVID. But then there's other times when we're spent and we actually can't pinpoint it. It's our weariness that results from the cumulative, multi-layered intersections of life's complexities. And that can be health issues, that can be job concerns, that can be relational tension, it can be the consequences of sin, it can be all the above. That stuff just makes us feel spent. 
And the truth is simple cliches don't really help. Like, cheer up, man, things are bound to turn around, or tomorrow is another day. They don't really help. But the truth is, a simple promise can relieve a complex burden as long as we believe that the power behind that promise is strong enough to relieve our heaviness. And that's the platform, that's the context of where Jesus' words can come and transform, where his words can come and speak into your life and literally change you. So if you're watching and maybe you're feeling a little anxious, if you're feeling a little spent, if you're feeling the tension of life with technology and the pull to always be connected, if you're feeling like this social distancing is having its toll on you, trust me, it's happening to me as well. Like, I'm not a big hugger, and man, I would love to hug every one of you right now. Like, if that is you, I want you to listen to what Jesus says. He says this, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Three words that set the tone here. Come to me. And what I love about this is that, you know, Jesus doesn't offer a fourfold path to peace giving enlightenment. He doesn't offer five pillars of peace through submission. He doesn't even give us 10 steps to relieve our weariness. He simply says, Come to me. He offers himself as the solution to everything that burdens us. He's saying, turn from whatever else it is you are presently depending upon and depend upon me. And come to me means there's no program, there's no religious system, there's no human leader. It's just Jesus. And I think he says this because we're prone to go everywhere else. We're so prone to look for answers of hope and for hope, for peace in a whole bunch of other things and in a whole bunch of other areas. It's probably why we binge on Netflix. It's why we tap out and scroll through our social media feed for hours. It's why some of us play video games for days. We're looking for that thing that feeds our soul. And Jesus is standing with open arms saying, come to me. I'm what you're looking for. I'm what your soul is craving for. And then he goes on, he says, come to me all, meaning this is for everyone. Like no one is excluded. This is for every person in every walk of life. And Jesus is saying, I'm not exclusive, I'm inclusive. I'm for everyone, I'm for you. So if you're watching and you've been told you're not religious enough, you're not good enough, you're not whatever, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is for you. That person that feels like you're at the end of the rope, Jesus is for you. That person who feels completely misunderstood and alone in this world, hear me out, Jesus is for you. That individual who has searched and searched and you're still feeling that ache inside, Jesus is for you. You know, while Jesus was on this earth, he rounded up and he connected with individuals. Most people believed well, I guess added nothing to society. Uh, Those that would only be considered the underclass, those that were constantly messing up and they they didn't really have life together, but he also connected with those that had everything together and were considered the elite. He not only reached out to each person, he spent time with them. He changed them because he said he came for all, for people like you, for people like me. And you have to hear this today. Jesus is for you. He is for you, meaning you need him. And he is for you, meaning he's all about you. He loves you. Now his promise goes on. He says, come to me all who are weary and burdened. Those are two very descriptive words here. Weary and burdened. He's kind of saying if you're tired and you're carrying too much, if you're exhausted, if you're feeling like you have to measure up to some standard. I came for those living in the tension, those looking for an out. How have you been lately? Are you tired? Are you stressed out? Are you burdened? Are you worried? Do you feel like you really never get a break from the things you're carrying? Like maybe you're burnt out on religion. Uh, Jesus was actually addressing his audience who were exactly that. They were working so hard to do everything right to be the perfect religious person. 
They were trying to follow the law of the Old Testament, the Pharisaical law. Uh, That had 613 laws to be exact. And this was tough. This was like putting a heavy weight on their shoulders. And this, for many, felt impossible. But Jesus is kind of saying, forget impossible. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. I've got something different for you. And if you're a parent, and since it's Mother's Day, moms, you get this, let's just be honest. There are times in our parenting lives where we sit back and say, man, this is too much. Maybe it's getting up throughout the night and you just can't get enough sleep. Maybe it's a teen whose relationship is deteriorating with you. Maybe your kid is finally married and out of the house, but everything fell apart. Maybe you're just feeling like you can't measure up to all those other better moms out there. Your meals don't look as good. Your house isn't as clean. Your homeschooling is lacking in structure. You're just weary. You're burdened. And Jesus is saying, come to me, come to me. And what? I love this. I will give you rest. Rest. It's a gift. I mean, even the mention of that word, it it just kind of brings this, and exhale. And rest simply means a break. And it's not just a break in the moment, but it's a break from things now and in the future. He's saying that you can actually live and do life in a restful state. It's kind of the ceasing of the pursuit to always measure up. It's the ceasing of trying and trying. It's the promise that says you are always given an out. And so I want us to look at what Jesus says after he says this. He goes on. He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. He now gives another way that we can find rest. The first way is to come to him. The second way is to take his yoke upon us. Now that seems counter to rest, doesn't it? It's kind of like, okay, Jesus, I'm trying to ditch the things I'm carrying here. I'm trying to get rid of the things that are heavy, that are burdensome in my life. Like, I don't want to pick up something else here. But he's saying his yoke's different. Now, in that culture, everyone understood that a yoke went across the neck of two or more animals, kind of in front of their shoulders, uh, which they then connected uh, the animals to the plow or the wagon they were to pull. And here's the thing about a yoke. It was meant to be shared. It was created to make a burden easier. It was created so that two or more could carry the load, carry the work together. And Jesus is saying, hey, put my yoke on you. I'm going to come alongside of you. I'm going to share that heavy load you're carrying. I'm going to make it easier. I'm going to be the one who will do the heavy lifting when you can't. I'm going to be the one who does the navigating when you're lost. I'm going to come alongside of you. Take my yoke on you. We're going at life together because remember, I am for you. It's almost like Jesus was asking us to do a yoke exchange. And we do this in two ways. In a spiritual sense, it's with the cross where Jesus takes our heavy yoke of sin's penalty and offers us an exchange to simply trust him. It's like he does all the work and gives us all the rest. And I'll say this, maybe you just need to do that exchange today. But his work not only fully addresses our sin problem, but also provides the supply of every other need we will ever have. All that we are required to do is to trust him. You know, Paul, he's a writer of the New Testament. He said it this way, And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And here's the thing. This is big, and you got to hear me out, okay? His yoke is perfectly fitted for you. His yoke isn't heavy. It complements your life. His yoke actually originates from a place of, of love. He loves you so much that he wants to do life with you. His yoke is to come alongside of you. And look what he says next. He says, learn from me. So put this on and learn from me. Learn from Jesus? Like, what are we supposed to learn? Well, this is actually called discipleship. This is growing in faith in Jesus. This is discovering what a life of Christianity looks like and what it entails. And Jesus himself actually modeled what it meant to know and walk with God. 
he actually consistently challenged the status quo of what religious people thought was true life with God. He took it from rules to relationships. He said things like, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And I'm kind of like, who says that? Someone who is modeling a different way to do life. Someone who understands when life is lived in this kind of pursuit, we will truly find rest. Listen to me. You see, the Christian life is, is not just about making a decision to follow Jesus and then carrying on with life as we know it. It begins that way, but then it takes some learning, some growing, some discovering, some effort. It takes discipline. And in fact, next week, I'm actually starting our new series entitled The Other 167, meaning the other hours of the week outside of the one hour in church. And the point is this, what do we do with those hours in our lives? It's a series on learning from Jesus. It's a series on spiritual disciplines, on those things that we need to be going after to help us get to know Jesus better. They help us learn what it means to follow him. They help us learn what it means to go after discipleship. So he says, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble. Gentle and humble, meaning Jesus deals with us not as we deserve, but in love. Meaning he's got patience for us. Meaning he wants us to get it right, and he's going to walk with us and help us until we get it right. You know, he's really saying, I'm here if you choose. Like, this is our choice. But when you come to me, you got to know, I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to make your life a little bit lighter. I'm going to bring you a new perspective. I'm here to help. I can give you a lift that will bring you rest. It's at the core of who I am. My heart is not to make you feel unworthy, uh, not to make you feel like you can't measure up, because I am gentle and I am humble. Meaning, I get that this is a journey. I'm going to walk this road with you towards rest and freedom. It's like Jesus knows there's so much gunning for our attention. He knows that there's so much that can steal our minds, our hearts, and our peace. And he's saying, until we take on his yoke, we won't find the ultimate rest that we're searching for. So why would we do all this? Here's why. He goes on to say this. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, I, I love those words. Check this out. Notice the opposite here, okay? He says, are you weary and burdened? And then he says, okay, come to me. Why? Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's easy and light. It sounds like a radio station. I get it. But Jesus gives us the total other end of the spectrum easy and light. And these words, they cry change. They shout, you can have a different kind of life. They scream, you always have an out. So what do we do? Like if we want to live in this promise, if we want to have the rest that Jesus talks about, how do we do this? How do we come to Jesus? First, it's really just a decision to follow him. It's saying, I realize you came and died on a cross for my sins and that you offer me life and life to the full. I believe you rose again and I need to put my trust in you. It's really intentionally deciding to choose him. And, and maybe you're watching and you just need to do that today. Maybe you grew up in church and you got stuck in religion or you got burnt out in religion. Maybe, maybe someone's been praying, like your mom or your grandma's been praying for you. Today is your day to make that choice. And in a moment, I'm going to pray with you. And I just want to say this, don't procrastinate any longer. But maybe you're watching and you've already made that choice, that decision. And, and so you just need to start making some steps in order to learn from him. And, uh, in the weeks ahead, we're going to show you some ways that you can do that. But today, I just want to give you two practical ways. And the first one is this. Be still. Turn off the noise. Psalm 4610, uh, Old Testament book, middle of the Bible says it this way. Be still and know that I am God. In other words, take a break. Quiet down. Relieve the tension. Listen. And so here's my challenge to you for this week. Every day, take five minutes to be still. That's it. Just five minutes. Do nothing except rest in him. 
And then secondly, I would say this, you need to make a plan, a plan to help you to not get distracted by all the noise and all the tension in your life, a plan that helps you stay committed and focused to learn from him. A plan that truly helps you live in rest and not in chaos. And the cool thing about that is the next five weeks, we're going to help you to create a plan in dealing with this. A plan that is both offensive and defensive. One that allows you to understand and live with the rest that Jesus talks about. So no matter what you're facing, no matter what tension you're carrying, No matter what burden has got you down, know this promise, you are always given an out. Jesus said it this way, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, in closing, I just really wanted you to have this song sung over you as a church. It's a song that speaks a scriptural blessing over your life and over your home, over your family. And with this being Mother's Day, I also wanted our moms to hear these words. And you got to know, this is our heart for you. This is our heart for your family. This is God's heart for you. And so just listen as Pastor Ryan and Wendy come and sing this song. And as they do, let me say this. I'm going to challenge you to close your eyes, to be still in this moment. And if you want, maybe just write where you're at in your home. Maybe just lift up your hands and even just receive this blessing from the Lord. Listen to it now. Yeah.
I love the words of that song. And that is our prayer over every single one of you today. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the promises that you give us in your word. I thank you for the promise that Jesus reiterates that we can come to him when we're feeling burdened, when we're feeling heavy and weary and stressed out, and that you will give us rest. And so I pray today for that person who just needs to come to you and say, here I am, Jesus, I give you everything I'm carrying. I'm going to take your yoke upon me. May they understand that. May they walk in that. May they know, God, that you do life with them side by side. You carry it when we are feeling weary and you walk together with us. And I thank you for that, Christ. I pray that that promise may be made real to every person. And specifically for moms today, I pray that you just speak inside of their hearts and lives. And may they know that, God, you do life with them as they carry the burden of being a mom and just walking through the sense of what it means to raise their kids or have adult kids and everything that's going on there. And so we just pray a blessing again upon our moms. And Father, I just ask that uh, for all of us, we may walk in the truth of that promise of that reality that you always give us an out and that out is restful and and that's a gift that you've given us and so may we receive that for your glory and for your honor and maybe you're watching and like i said earlier you're saying i actually need to come to jesus i've never made that decision or i did when i was a kid that was a long time ago and i kind of strayed away and you're saying today i want to make the decision to surrender my life to christ i want to choose him i want to come to him so i'm going to pray a prayer and and it's just a way of stating your intention to follow jesus and why don't you pray along with me today i see my need for you jesus I want you. I need you in my life. I want to come to you. And so I surrender all that I am completely to you. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I thank you that I can do that yoke exchange and surrender all that I am to you. And so from this day forward, I want to pattern my life after yours. I thank you for the forgiveness that you give me and for the reset. And so as I put my faith, as I put my trust in you, I ask that I may walk with you and follow you from this day forward. And I pray this for my life and I pray this in in your glory and in your honor. And Lord, I just pray over every individual, every couple and every family that's tuned in. I pray that you continue to guide them, lead them, direct them, bless them. I thank you that we can just uh, commit them to you and know that they are in your hands during this time and during this season. And God, I just pray that they may know you greater and deeper and they may walk in the promise of saying, yes, I will come to Jesus. I will give them everything and I will find rest for my soul. We pray this in your awesome name, Jesus. Amen. You know, I want to say this. If you did pray the prayer of surrendering your life to Christ, 
maybe for the first time, or a rededication prayer. First off, I'm very excited for that. Around here, we believe that following Jesus is the best decision anyone can make. So stoked for you on that. Uh, In the chat, our host pastors are going to put up a link. You can connect that way. We'd love to get some information in your hand about what it means to follow and know Jesus. And you can also connect with one of our pastors if you choose to. Also, if you're watching, I'm going to ask you to text the word LIFE to 555-888. If you've made that decision, we'd love to get a digital booklet in your hand that way. And it also gives you the opportunity to connect with one of our pastors if you choose to. You know, one of the things we've been doing week after week here through just online is we don't want your experience to end right now. Uh, We're going to have a slide coming up with some questions. And I just want to encourage you to talk about what you heard today. Take some time to engage with this a little bit further. Hope City, hear me out. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he give you peace and may his favor be upon you, your family, your children, and their children. Love you guys. Have a great week.